Professor Yun's The Evolution Theory from the Viewpoint of Christianity, The Thorough Analysis of the Descent or Origin of Man, Lecture 20, Chapter 13, Secondary Sexual Characters of Bird, Continue. We have as yet spoken only of the voice, but the males of various birds practice during their courtship what may be called instrumental music. Peacocks and birds of paradise rattle their quills together. Turkey cocks scrape their wings against the ground and some of the grouse thus produce a buzzing sound. Another North American grouse, Tetrao umbellus, when with his tail erect, his ruffs displayed. He shows off his finery to the females, who lie hid in the neighborhood, drums by rapidly striking his wings together above his back. The female never drums, but flies directly to the place where the male is thus engaged. As this jarring sound is made chiefly during the breeding season, it has been considered as a love song, but it is perhaps more strictly a love call. The diversity of the sounds, both vocal and instrumental, made by the males of many birds during the breeding season, and the diversity of the means for producing such sounds are highly remarkable we thus gain a high idea of their importance for sexual purpose and are reminded of the conclusion arrived at as two insects. It is not difficult to imagine the steps by which the notice of a bird primarily used as a mere call or for some other purpose might have been improved into a melodious love song. The gesticulations and parade of males at the beginning of the love season are extremely ludicrous. Certain brothers perform their love antics on the wing, as we have seen with the black American weaver. During the spring, our little white throat often rises a few feet or yard in the air above some bushy, and flutters with a fitful and fantastic motion, singing all the while and then drops to its perch. But the most curious case is afforded by three allied genera of Australian birders. The famous Bauer brothers, no doubt the co descendants of some ancient species, which first acquired the strange instinct of constructing bowers for performing their love antics. The bowers, which are decorated with feathers, shells, bones, and leaves, are built on the ground for the sole purpose of courtship. For their nests are formed in trees. Both sexes assist in the erection of the bower, but the male is the principal workman. So strong is this instinct that it is practiced under confinement. These curious creations form the soul as a whole of assemblage where both sexes amuse themselves and pay their court must cost the brothers much labor. As with the artificial ornaments used by savage and civilized men, so with the natural ornaments of brothers, the head is the chief seat of decoration. The ornaments are wonderfully diversified. Hence, variations of the most different kinds have served for the development through sexual selection of these ornamental appendages. In other genus of night jars, the tail feathers are even still more prodigiously developed. 
In general, the feathers of the tail are more often elongated than those of the wings, as any great elongation of the latter impedes flight. We thus see that in closely allied birds, ornaments of the same kind have been gained by the males through the development of wildly different feathers. It is a curious fact that the feathers of species belonging to very distinct group have been modified in almost exactly the same peculiar manner. As any fleeting fashions in dress comes to be admired by men, so with the birds a change of almost any kind in the structure or coloring of the feathers in the male appear to have been admired by the female. The fact of the feathers in widely distinct group having been modified in an analogous manner no doubt depends primarily on all the feathers having nearly the same structure and manner of development and consequently tending to vary in the same manner. Female birds of paradise are obscurely colored and destitute of all ornaments, whilst the males are probably the most highly decorated of all birds. Male humming birds almost vie with birds of paradise in their beauty. Such cases are curiously like those which we see in our fancy breeders reared by man for the sake of ornament. The sole difference between these cases is that in the one the result is due to man's selection, whilst in the other, as with humming birds, birds of paradise, etc. It is due to the selection by the females of the more beautiful males. Ornaments of all kinds, whether permanently or temporarily gained, are sedulously displayed by the males and apparently serve to excite, attract, or fascinate the females. It is more like a work of art than of nature. But it appears that when sexual selection has been highly influential and has given bright colors to the males of any species, it has also very often given a strong tendency to pugnacity. From the foregoing factors, we clearly see that the plumes and other ornaments of the males must be of the highest importance to them, and we further see that beauty is even sometimes more important than success in battle. Shalom. Alehem.